Welcome to Gestalt, working with Gestalt theory design um, and putting together this time the poster. This is movie number two and we're going to assemble the style of poster like this. I'll just take you through the start of it so you get a feel on how it works. Now remember, Pathfinder tool, and I've just got this from under my Pathfinder here. I'm just going to use just for some examples of the text here, but you can use any text. If you're doing a poster, a film poster, it might be the, the type that describes the, the movie or could be poetry or anything that's going to help with the illusion of this work. So the first thing would we'll just gestalt. Okay, well, I'm just going to come back here. I'll leave that there at the time being, but I just want to create something like a G here. Now, remember this 30% grid, so I'm going to set the same thing up. So I'm just going to go File New. And I'm working with an A3 here, so if you don't have A3, just go and choose A3 or really whatever size that you want to choose, but I'm just keeping it consistent. I'm also working with a bleed, so I've got a document bleed, um, just so I can crop off um, elements going off the page, etc. as well. But um, please feel free to not use that if you don't need to. This is just, um, just to help you set up a document, especially if you're going to print it where imagery goes off the page or off the trim area. So I'm just going to call this, uh, um, uh, say, Gestalt, Gestalt 2. That's a good name for it. And I'm just going to go OK. Now, I've also, in my setup, orientation, just landscape. OK, so that's basically good to go. So here's the page here. Now, the first thing I want to do is I actually want to go and get a letter form. So I'm just going to click up here. And, oh, hold on, what's happened if I just start typing some words here? Mine's actually going off on, on an angle, a degrees. So I'm just going to click back here and just delete that. Now, just to go through and let you know, if you're not too sure about that again, we're going to come up here to our preferences. Just before that, I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to turn on Show Grid. We've got a grid on an angle. Now, just because I had the last file at an angle, that's why it's done that. So just remember, if you didn't see the first movie, Click on Preferences, instead of being a 90 degree angle, there's a typical angle, we're just going to click Preferences here and just make that 30. might be a 60, you can really have any angle you want, but 30 and 60 work nicely, they work nicely with visual effects for the eye, and also when you're doing Simon Dune to Yellow and Black, you use screens um, similar to that, or if you're doing Durotones, you know, mixed colours to get off angles for getting great screens, etc. But anyway, a nice visual screen. 30. So here is, here's 30 and I'll just go OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click my type tool just on the angle there and I'm just going to do a cap G. Just sort of follow on the same things as before. Now I'm just working with Myriad Pro. You can work with a whole range of fonts but I think it's good to have a selection. Maybe two is good or in this case I'm just using one. I just want to work with something that works nicely and it's all about the, um, the illusion of it. and don't want to get too confusing with the type but sometimes the changing the type can create just the right message. Uh, because it's Illustrator I can just simply, um, I'm going to hold my option key and just scale it up nice and big. Um, I could also select it and maybe I'll just go over here and just make it um, really big from um, actually the the angle that I'm working with as well. So it's, it's, it's quite a big size here, font size 364. So I want it to be a lot bigger than that. Uh, now there's another way of getting uh, more control with your type and that's just um, if you go um, basically under window and um, just looking for type, if you come all the way down to type, and we've got Command T, which is our character tool, okay? And that will give us a, an additional range of tools to work with, especially the touch-up type tool, which means you can move things out of, um, out of kilter if you wanted to do that. Anyway, um, we'll leave this here and we'll just have a bit quick play with that. The first thing is I'm going to make this uh, a little bit bigger than that. Maybe um, I'll just see what uh, uh, 500 looks like. And just hit the return. Well that's nowhere near so I might take it up to uh, maybe a thousand. See if that's about the right size. And actually that looks pretty good to me. And I'm just going to bring that down here. And um, I'm going to convert it to outlines. Okay. So type. And I'm going to take it away from being a font because I want to be able to break it up. So I'm going to create outlines. Okay, so um, 
it's now graphic, no longer text. I'm just going to, with the shift key, just drag this bigger than the page, and just drag it out there like that, and um, just bring my page back in. Hold your space bar, by the way, and then you can actually, uh, space bar, just move your page around. Nice, easy way to do it. I want to take my graphic off the page here, okay? So, space bar, just move it back in. Now, that's looking great. And I just want to line it up so it's going to line with the grid somewhere. Okay. And just so it sort of snaps into place like so. So, it's a graphic now. It's like a box or anything. Now, what I want to do is I want to um, chop this out a little bit. So, I'm just going to grab a square here. And I'm going to come down here. And I want to line that up with the type there. So, we've got that there. Okay, now it doesn't matter that I've got uh, a box of the same color um, or I've got a box with a fill or not, but what we can see here, I'm just going to go up to my view and look at outline and we can see that it's still a graphic just on top of a graphic. So I'll go back to preview. This is where I can use my um, tools here, which is the Pathfinder tool. So I'll click back on the Pathfinder. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this graphic and I'm going to select the background graphic. I want a minus um, the front from this back. So I can go and click on like so and see what happens. It's disappeared. I'll just go and show you in the outline view. It's gone, all right? So it's always good to just test, uh, test that to make sure you're working. Now what I might just do up um, on this version here, um, the bottom one, if I select it, it's still all selecting. So I can uh, probably go up here and ungroup it. So I can sort of do that and then I can select on it. Or sometimes you can, if you want to not ungroup it, you can just use the group selection tool to do it. But anyway, I've ungrouped it here. And what I might do in this case, I'm just going to now bring up, um, let's see, I'll bring up my swatches just down the bottom here. Now you can work with any colors that you want to set up. I'm just going to stay with the greater grays. And I'm just making sure I'm on the fill there. Just give it um, a color. So straight away, I've got, I'm starting to break this up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and get some text here. So I'm just going to go back to my stock text. And I'm just going to just do the first line here. So in fact, I might just uh, copy the whole thing as just a group. Okay, so just Command-C, Control-C on a PC. I'm just going to come back in here. And um, basically, I'm just going to... Uh, paste it in, okay? So I paste it in. Now, what I've got here is that it's come in and it's come in flat because that's how the other work was, etc. Now, what you can do is, if I go and try and turn that, see how you can turn it like so? See what happens to the text? It might not be what you want. So you can actually just click on that, double click, and then we can actually just scroll it into place. Now, another way of doing it, just selecting text and copying it and pasting it at the angle itself but I'm just going to drop it in like so. There's lots of ways to put it together, and this is why Illustrator is so much better. So I'm going to start this off here, and I'll put the type here, and over the other side, I'm just going to use that same text again, Command-C, Command-V, and I'm going to take it over to, say, where it would join up here, because you see I can see the grid, and um, just at that point, maybe here, I'm going to rotate it, oops, just rotate it around here and I'm going to make sure it starts off at the same place where it finishes there. I might even just uh, make this a little bit bigger and take it through and uh, making sure it's just fitting in there nicely and suddenly I've got this alignment. Maybe it comes down just a little bit to make sure it lines up here. So you see how that lines up through there? And it starts going down there. Now the secret of, of this whole, whole file is to start putting elements in. I'll just uh, just put a, a box here, see how it's fitting in. Um, another one up the top, for example. Okay. And you fill in the whole area. So it instead of having just one focal point, your center becomes the focal point. The whole storytelling nature of the file and it's basically revealed. So there's still a lot of work to go to, to this stage, but we've got the start of it now. So you have even coverage, not 
big empty spaces that basically your eye focus into because it's too empty uh, or, or unbalanced. But if I come back to the finished one here, by putting everything in, you start getting the evenness and even swapping off some of the angles with your type, um, but still playing with the alignment, which actually works in the opposite of this curve. And so you slowly build up. So it's not something you just do in one go. You build it up, you take it away, you add other things, you cut into those until it reveals itself at the end. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So that's just a quick guide of how you do it. It's just a matter of spending time and putting it together. So enjoy working with Gestalt.